Welcome to Northampton Maths and Economics Tutor website. This video is to help you do Section A 25 multiple choice questions for AQA Economics Unit 1 Markets and Market Failure. And the examination paper is from summer of 2012. First question is the central purpose of economic activity is the satisfaction of needs and wants. And we know by definition that needs and wants are unlimited and resources are finite. Therefore, we try to satisfy as many needs and wants as possible. In the diagram below shows the marginal private and social benefit MPB and MSB curves and the marginal private and social cost which is MPC and MSC curves for a good. And if you look at the diagram, this is the point where MSC and MSB are equal and that means the combination of price and output a b c o d will improve the allocation of resources compared with the market outcome at q e so what we are saying is that's the point where the markets internalizes the market price internalizes all externalities so we can see that the price p e has gone to p2 and the q e has decreased to q2 so higher price and lower output which would be option C. Moving on to question number The diagram below shows the supply S and demand curve D curves for a normal good. So by definition, a normal good, as the income increases, the demand for that good increases. However, over here, D1 has moved on to D2, and I've said change in citrus variables, anything other than price, which, if it's a normal good, should have been income. And we can see the price has increased, but consumption has increased as well. I've used over here process of elimination explaining why A, B and C are not the answers. I've put down reasons over here. Demand will go down, demand will go down and D1 will go down as postponed to fu uh, future. So an increase in income of buyers, we know it's a normal good and that is why the D has shifted outwards. So normal goods consumed more, D is the answer. In question number four, to calculate the percentage change in the quantity supplied of a good following a change in its price, the price elasticity of supply should be C multiplied by the percentage change in price. The best way to work this out should be using the formula as I have shown over here. PES equals percentage change in QS over percentage change in PS. To find in to find percentage change in QS, all we need to do is PES times percentage change in price, which is answer C. On to question 5. An economy uh, which average income has fallen by 5% has also seen the demand for holiday overseas fall by 20%. So it can be concluded from that that the income elasticity of demand for holidays overseas is. To calculate YED, what we say is change in quantity demanded over change in income which is minus 20% over minus 5% which equals plus 4 so the answer is A. In question number 6 a monopoly market will be less economically efficient than a competitive market if under monopoly prices are higher and output is low because we know by experience monopolies reduce supply to benefit from higher prices to make higher profits. A monopoly cannot set both prices and quantity. What they do normally is to get higher profit, uh, profits. They'll try to increase the price. To increase the price, what they do is they reduce the supply of the commodity in the market. In question number seven, an economy is always productively efficient if it can produce more of one good by only producing less of another good. So as I've shown over here in the diagram that the economy is operating on the PPF so we've got point A, point B, we've got good A and good B. So to increase the production of good B, good A will has to decrease and we're moving from A to B. In, in other words, there is no spare capacity in the economy as it is producing on PPF. In question number eight, in the diagram below, the government introduces a subsidy on a good. This shifts the supply curve for the good from S1 to S2. So it's shifting the supply outwards. What I've done over here is I've put down the explanation saying at price G, suppliers are willing to supply at Q. So at that G, that's what the suppliers are supplying. However, 
at that price this is where if you look at the move of my arrow the demand will be so there is an excess supply so at price F the consumers are willing to consume at Q so the difference GF or FG is the subsidy from the government so what I've said is for Q consumption that's the price the consumers are willing to pay and that's the price at G which the producers will be willing to supply at Q so the subsidy or the difference between the two is GF which is being given by the government hence the answer is C or FG in question number nine the equilibrium price in a market is the market clearing price when there is no excess or demand or excess supply which I have explained over here in the diagram you've got the demand curve you've got the supply curve so that's the excess supply and that's the excess demand QE there is no de excess demand or no excess supply in question number 10 which one of the following would be classified by an economist under the factors of production known as land fish in ocean what I've done is I've put down first of all the four factors of production is land labor capital enterprise I've again used the process of elimination where I've said a tractor is a capital chemical fertilizer is again capital and the farmer would be labor or you could say it's the enterprise and C is the answer by using process of elimination in question number 11 government failure may result directly from and I have again used process of uh, elimination where I've said A is the answer the high cost of administering government policy which is one of the features of government failure however I've said B, C, D are all examples of market failures in question number 12 the diagram below shows the market demand curve D and two market supply curves S1 and S2 for a good. The initial equilibrium is at E1. We can see the supply has moved inwards and the price has increased from 20 to 25 and the quantity has moved inwards. What I've done is I've put down the formula for PED and I have calculated the percentage change in quantity demanded which is minus 1 by 3 percent percentage change in price is, is 1 by 4 percent then I've used this and I've come that PED is minus 1.33 therefore B is the answer in question number 13 which one of the following is an example of composite demand again I have used process of elimination where I've said A is derived demand B is complementary and C is the law of demand now D the demand for bricks increases for use in both house building and factory building is composite demand and hence it is the answer in question number 14 the diagram below shows a country's production possibility frontier I've said Z is outside of PPF cannot be produced Y can be produced but less resources are needed on the other hand V, W, X are all on the PPF the question is asking which one of the following combination of goods and services could be produced with the resources available which would be all four points V, W, X and Y why? why? because Y is inside the PPF and there will be some spare resources lying around in the economy number 15 positive externalities exist when private benefits are less than social benefits so by definition we know MSB is greater than MBB or social costs are less than private costs in question number 16 market failure arises whenever firm create externalities whether positive or negative demerit and merit goods both are examples of market failure in question number 17 the diagram below shows the demand D and supply S curves for a good which generates positive externalities in consumption so P max that's the maximum price that can be charged that's the supply at that price D2 is the consumption so XYZ or XZ is the excess demand 
Hence, the quantity sold remains at OX, which is the supply, and there is an unsatisfied demand YXZ. Hence, the answer is B. In question number 18, all other things being equal, supply curve slopes upwards from left to right because higher price leads to higher profits, hence producers are willing to supply more. And I have explained this by the diagram where I have said this is the producer surplus. With a higher price, there is more supply and we can see there is an increase in producer surplus. Question number 19 is a straightforward mathematical question. The table below shows the annual demand and supply schedule for an agricultural product. The government fixes the minimum price at £9 to be maintained by intervention. How much will an action cost the government each year? We know at £9 the demand is 6, the supply is 10, so 4,000 spare units, 4,000 times 9 is 36 grand. Hence D is the answer. One reason why UK government provides education is because the social benefit of providing education is more than private benefits, it's a merit good. So the private benefit from education is less than the social benefit, it's the other way around, same thing. I have also explained over here, education cannot be provided by the free market, but we know they are independent schools, hence this statement is not true. In C, all education is both a merit good and a public good, no it is not because we have example of independent schools. This ensures that the provision of education is maximized. Could be a quasi-public good. I've put that down over here. This is something which you should be exploring. Moving on to the diagram below shows the supply and demand curve for sugar. And I have said this is the market clearing price. P1 at P minimum, if that's the minimum price, for the market, then we know this is the supply and that's the quantity demanded which is the excess demand. However, let's have a look what the question is asking. The question says price is initially at P1. If producer now sets a minimum price of OP minimum, what effect will this have? Nothing because the minimum price is below the market price. So supply and demand will still be at P1. So let's have a look what it says. A. Equilibrium price and quantity will remain at OP1 and OQ1 respectively A. As I said, it will not make any difference because the market clearing price is above the uh, minimum price. In question number 22, the diagram below illustrates the free market supply and demand curves for a merit good. So that's the supply curve, that's the demand curve, that's the uh, price of equilibrium and quantity of equilibrium. What I've said is in a merit good, MSB is a greater than MPB. Hence, we've got this MSB curve coming down. Because it's coming down at that point, the price should have been higher to inc uh, encourage more supply and consumption. So at the free market equilibrium position in sh is shown, there is a misallocation of resources because consumption of the goods creates a positive externality. To improve the allocation of resources, as we can see from the diagram and part B, more of the goods should be supplied, higher than QE. Moving on to question number 23. An increase in the price of petrol will often result in consumer econo economizing their, in the use of fuel by reducing the number of journeys that they make in car this I have stated answer is C which is illustrates the op operation of rationing function of price mechanism expensive therefore people use it less in question number 24 a firm will always reduce its unit cost of production as it expands its output if it benefits from specialization what I've done is I've also used process of elimination and I've said why B will not work if it reduces its price decreases output from demand and supply curves, moves down the economy's PPF, no change in productivity, expands its use of capital and labor, I have said there was spare capacity, no shift in PPF. In question number five, market failure results in a misallocation of resources. 
In some cases, this can be corrected by the government by providing public goods. What I've done is I've explained using process of elimination why A is not the answer. As I've said, merit goods where MSB is greater than MPB and we have positive externalities. In C, subsidizing all loss making firms is inefficient. D, placing a tax on merit goods reduces consumption further and merit goods are underproduced and underconsumed. Please leave your feedback on my video if you enjoyed it. Thank you.